Good morning, we are currently on site and I would like to discuss the pop-off, the down valve and the air recirculation valve, which are commonly referred to by different names. Let's assume that in Italy, we commonly refer to them as pop-off valves. So let's proceed in this manner. The pop-off valve is a component that is designed to cut off pressure spikes that occur when I release the accelerator pedal and close the throttle on a gasoline engine. As you know, I'm not good at drawing, but I attempted to create a simple diagram in order to grasp the basic functioning of this system. I possess an intake manifold, so at this point I have the engine that is either drawing in air or, in the case of a turbo, compressing it. I possess a throttle valve that is essentially linked to the accelerator, which opens and closes, thereby permitting the passage of air into the intake manifold and subsequently into the engine. Prior to the engine, I have an intercooler, which is a pipe connecting to the turbine compressor, as well as the air inlet originating from the filter along the circuit. Following the compressor, typically without the intercooler, I situate a vent pipe. I connect it to a small valve and recirculate this pressure into the intake, creating a closed loop around the turbo compressor. This valve is connected with a small tube to the intake manifold, which means that when the throttle valve is open and the boost pressure is high, there is positive pressure inside the intake manifold, and I have a pressure that keeps this valve closed. When I close the throttle downstream of it, a vacuum is created in the intake manifold, which results in a change in the airflow dynamics and helps to optimize the performance of the turbocharger system. I possess a negative pressure which causes the throttle to open. By taking the butterfly into account, this creates a closed loop and consequently, I no longer have, for instance, any pressure within the circuit. Why is that? Why when I'm on the straight and I'm going fast at a bar four or bar five of overboost, so I have a lot of thrust and I have the rotor spinning very, very fast when suddenly I take my foot off the accelerator and close the throttle between the compressor that is still spinning and the same creates what is the water hammer. That is the pressure arrives, finds closed, bounces back creates pressure peaks that are a wave that goes up and down and brings me into vibration, the balls of the compressor, and obviously also creates a problem on the thrust bearing because it creates a fluctuation. A violent vibration on the shaft obviously reduces the reliability of the turbocharger, both in terms of the thrust bearing and obviously the compressor impeller because when I bring the blades into vibration, I can eventually break them due to fatigue. So when I close the throttle and give the command to the valve and the valve opens, creating this recirculation, what do I do? From a sudden average pressure, if I did not have the valve, I would have peaks instead. But having this open recirculation circuit, my depression decreases linearly. So I do not give any more thrust to the thrust bearing and I do not bring the blades into vibration. This is very positive in terms of reliability. There are systems that can be implemented to prevent or mitigate these vibrations, such as dampers or active control mechanisms. We utilize them, for instance, highly efficient contemporary turbochargers. We employ them for fine tuning the Lancia Delta for the Sierra Cosworth, Engines of this kind where the system I just explained is even incorporated into the compressor. I demonstrate it physically here. We possess an integrated system that is, we generate two passages. One is the high pressure one, and this is the depression one that connects me to the intake. So these two, when I proceed to open them, I have this valve positioned above when I give depression the valve opens, it puts me in communication, these two holes, and therefore the compressed air recirculates, enters inside, passes me in aspiration, makes a closed loop inside the compressor very fast. I love this modern system very much because this system allows me not to discharge too much the circuit. All that we are saying generally happens. I don't know, imagine in a circuit, we are in Monza, we are on the straight, we are going very, very fast. 
very high pressure, we arrive at the bottom, detached down closing of the throttle blow from the back. But let's say if I had the pop-off valve open and closed as soon as I finished half a turn, I immediately give gas again and then reopen the throttle, I could find myself with the circuit partially empty because obviously I created this loop and this could lead to small delays. We are talking about hundredths of a second, but when we talk about cars, when we talk about the track, when we talk about races, when we talk about efficiency, we also talk about fractions of a second. You win by a fraction of a second in cars. From high performance track where the cost of the turbine is not so relevant and anyway the turbine is used for a very limited period of time so maybe I only do one race I can think of removing the pop-off completely. It is obvious that I bring effort on the line, I bring the compressor parts into vibration, the compressor parts go into vibration but to break them I have to bring them to fatigue I have to operate under these conditions for a while. As for the shots on the track when using a racing engine, I employ a very good oil, making it difficult for it to lose viscosity, density, and thus the oil films still tend to hold up. I then change the oil from race to race, ensuring that I always have a perfect oil for optimal performance. So I can think of removing the damper because I want to remove it, because when I reach the end of the straight and I close the throttle, I create the water hammer effect. So I have peaks and resonance here inside the circuit that fluctuates back and forth. Since the use precisely on the track, as soon as I reopen the accelerator to resume in the curve, I find a beneficial effect. I find that it suddenly comes to me. I open one of the peaks it enters and gives me a kind of, let's call it super instant overboost. This allows me to create a little more mass of gas all of a sudden and therefore discharge more energy on the turbine and I immediately recover the compressor. So technically it is very important to eliminate it if possible. And let's say that up to 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 bar, I would consider it useless. Let's say that beyond that, it is good to use it on gasoline engines. Let's say that on diesel engines, it makes no sense. They have made them. It's a ridiculous thing without technique because we don't have the throttle anyway. So let's say we don't have this effect. And today there are also versions. Let us go and see the 1.4 Chet engine of Fiat, where we have this type of electric valve and we can even think that it can be exploited in certain control strategy situations. This is important to know all these things here. I am often asked, do I use the pop-off or not? Do I use it externally or internally? That is, do I throw it open? Let's say that the pop-off is its logic to always be recirculated because the pop-off externally is technically still an error. We have a mass reader that sees the air entering and it does all its calculations to maintain the stoichiometric ratio. I throw the air out so I still enrich too much in certain moments the engine. And they are all technical things, maybe not too well known, but it is good to look at them well because when one goes to do an elaboration, they also affect reliability in my speech. Greetings, dear friends and fellow enthusiasts of automobile engineering.